Jesus Christ, this is an enormous bedroom for one kid. How many desks does he need? Cellar shadowing. Also, I guess mom stopped playing the piano just in time for Georgie to enter the cellar, but takes no notice of him whatsoever. Of course, her rampant negligence is possibly the best parenting in the movie. Hurry up. Because Bill has had a very busy day of lying in bed and trying not to vomit out of his nose anymore, there is no need for Bill to tell Georgie to hurry up. Therefore, we get the first of many unnecessary jump scares from this movie. Kid is afraid to go down in the cellar and the light switch doesn't work cliche. Why in the hell do they store the flashlight in a dark basement? And if Georgie knew this sh was here, why didn't he go for that in the first f***ing place? How the hell did Georgie not see the second barricade if he clearly saw the first one? This whole movie can be blamed on Georgie's inability to view things in three dimensions. Do you want a balloon to a Georgie? I'm not supposed to take stuff from strangers. Georgie knows not to take stuff from strangers, but was not taught to never talk to clowns in full makeup that live in storm sewers. Can you smell the circus, Georgie? There's peanuts, cotton candy, hot dogs. I get that Pennywise thinks kids are stupid, and rightfully so. However, zero kids would find it appetizing to go eat a f***ing hot dog in the sewer. Why doesn't he just stick to the hole? If you want your boat, you're gonna have to come down here and get it tactic. Also, considering Georgie is so scared to walk down a few stairs into the cellar, why is he even considering going down into a sewer with a f***ing clown in it to retrieve a paper boat? What about the first scene indicated that Bill would even be upset if Georgie lost it? Popcorn! Is that your favorite? Uh-huh. Well, I do! I'm gonna go ahead and take off a sin for Bill Skarsgård's performance here, because this scene is a perfect encapsulation of everything that makes Pennywise terrifying. I mean, look at that f***ing smile! Also, having said that, this is really the only time Pennywise is allowed to be truly creepy. Everything that comes after this is reliant on effects or jump scares, rather than this disturbing dialect and his shadowy presence. So, kudos for creating an amazing character movie, but also here's a sin for showing way too much of him later. There are two places you can be in this world. You can be out here like us, or you can be in there, like them. Or you could get a job that doesn't involve brutally murdering sheep, if that's not your thing. <laughs> Even back when this was written in 1986, we knew there'd be a kids being bullied by older kids Stephen King storyline. Nice frisbee, flamer. That's like everything system. You got a free ride this year because you're a little brother. Henry's bully boner was cock blocked for a full eight months due to Georgie's disappearance? The f sense does that make? <laughs> Yeah, man, that was some excellent bullying right there. I can't wait to learn more over the summer. Beverly and her backpack are looking extremely clean after just having had water poured all over her. Jeez, doesn't anyone actually ride their bike home from school? The Barons. It's the only place that, that, that Georgie could have ended He's up. He's gone, Bill. Look, I know all the parents in this movie are dickheads and that the Georgie situation was hard on Bill's dad, but the Barons are pretty f***ing close, right? Could they not just drive out there and check to make sure he's not right? Wouldn't it have made more sense for Mike to go in the store and hide out? He's literally right outside the f***ing door. If this is it, why is he just now starting to terrorize Mike? Or really any of the kids? He ate Georgia's Pennywise eight months ago, and snacked on Betty Ripsom, but decided to wait until summer for the main course? Other than seeing Henry and his gang be a bunch of dicks, there's zero context as to why they were going to run over Mike. And Henry screaming, stay the f*** out of my town, makes no sense if you didn't read the book or see the original miniseries. And you know how we feel about that f here. Totally get that Pennywise can take whatever form it wants to? That's established pretty early on. But now he can make things disappear off paintings? If he's able to f*** with matter and space this way, why go through all the trouble of f***ing with these kids before killing them? He could just turn their house into a sandwich and eat away. Door opens slowly and creaks loudly because horror movies got a horror. First you said the barons, and now you're saying the sewer. I mean, what if we get caught? Sure is lucky for it that Bill convinces all these kids to go to the sewer, where all the killings take place. Like, shouldn't Pennywise be hanging around an arcade or movie theater if he really wants some kid meat? Damn, this book of exposition goes from sawmill workers to child murder in just a few pages. Also, luckily Ben landed exactly on this section of the book, considering he randomly opened it in the middle for some reason. Movie does a great job here of creating tension with something as simple as random characters in the background staring. Makes you wish the director had relied more on ideas like this and less on jump scares. However, great bit, so I'll remove a sin. The fact that this supposedly intelligent character picks up this foreign object leads me to believe that Jeremy Ray Taylor is secretly auditioning for a role in the next Fantastic Four reboot. Sure seems odd that Pennywise picks this one group of kids that are either already friends or about to become friends. I guess it's possible all the kids in Derry are having these encounters. But some mention of that would have been a nice addition to the proceedings. Eggboy! Dude, he just read a story about Easter eggs, so now he's typecast as Eggboy? Where are you off to, tits? You see, that's a much better insulting nickname. Also, I know Henry's a troublemaker and a bully and all that, but was he literally hanging out next to the library in order to harass Ben as soon as he came out? How long has he been waiting? Jesus, Derry might have a bigger problem with the countless number of serial killers in the making residing here than it ever will with some demonic alien clown. Ah! 
<laughs> Henry! Is Bill truly confused about what Henry is capable of? Not to mention he kept holding Ben after Patrick tried to Michael Jackson him with the homemade flamethrower. My knife! My old man will kill me! Actually, he might be relieved that the only evidence that links his son to the attempted murder was lost. How in the hell did Discount Adam Driver and his buddy not catch up to Ben? I know they paused briefly to discuss Henry's knife, but they were right behind him, and up until now there's been only one f***ing path. Whose sneaker is it? It's Betty Ripsom's. Look, I understand writing your name on your backpack, or your gym uniform, like that, but your f***ing sneaker? Did she do this with both of them? Also, this autographed shoe just happens to be the first f***ing item these kids come across in the sewer. Glad I got to meet you before you died. This is a nice gesture and all to help Ben out, but wouldn't just taking him to a doctor have been a better call? Well, how about that? You look just like Lois Lane. Look, it's not the movie's fault, because Stephen King wrote these parts, but I'm gonna give a sin to this town for not having a single f***ing redeemable adult character. Also, I guess this is the only instance of it being lucky that the pharmacy is run by a pedophile so that Bill and his crew can steal the stuff. Who's first? I'll go! How did Bev time this so perfectly? Bill just told her... We were thinking about going to the quarry tomorrow. But he didn't tell her what time. And she can't have been waiting here, since she just pulled up in the middle of the path. If this water's shallow enough to touch, all of them should have died when they jumped in. I don't know how it's possible to make a horror movie about a demonic clown, one of the best coming-of-age stories of the year, but it happened. These shots of childhood summer nostalgia give me chills and deserve a sin off, and I promise that's the last one. People die or disappear six times the national average, and that's just grown-ups. Kids are worse. How is there a terrible national average when Pennywise only shows up every 27 years like an unpunctual cicada? Where, where was the Wah House? I don't know. Somewhere in town, I guess. Ben knows everything about dairy, yet neglects basic geography. I mean, I know the well house isn't there anymore, but it was surely on those old maps that Bill was just looking at. Do you think this will help me, Daddy? <laughs> Look, I know it can take any form, and the kids are scared of different things, but none of these other monsters are anywhere close to being as scary as Pennywise. And apparently all the kids are scared of the clown, so why not just stick with that? Well, float down here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why didn't Pennywise kill Eddie? I realize he's trying to build the fear in the town, but he's got this asshole cornered in his backyard. This should be easy. Jesus, I bet the bathrooms in the rundown leper house Eddie was just at are cleaner than this one. That door looks like it needs a tetanus shot. Bev seems surprised to see an aggressive hair clog when she was the one that dumped all that hair directly into the drain last night. Once again, It had a kid in his grasp and decided to be a bloody dick instead of killing Bev. I mean, why didn't Betty Ripsom get the same consideration? No flow two! No flow two! Yes! Wait, it is a singular entity, right? It can morph into almost anything, but there aren't multiples of him. So how is he posing as Georgie and Pennywise at the same time? <laughs> well, I guess that's that. I spent all this time planning this attack, but that clever little bastard countered with the old run up the stairs move. What is it? You'll see. Or maybe you won't. Damn it, this movie is way too good to be busting out a protracted you better come take a look at this cliche. What happened in here? My dad couldn't see it. I th thought I might be crazy. Even after they're in the bathroom, Bev refuses to tell them that a hair clog attacked her, then puked blood all over the walls. If they can all see the blood, then how did Beverly get cleaned up the night before? She was covered in the blood, and there's no way she would have been able to use this bathroom. This is stranger than I thought. Wow, this is just the most adorable adolescents banding together to clean up demonic blood montage that I've ever seen. And I can't tell you how many of those just popped into my head. It seemed like him, but there was this... The clown. Why would Eddie mention the clown here? The only thing that attacked him was the ghost leper outside the house. Can only virgins see this stuff? Is that why I'm not seeing this sh Listen, I love Finn Wolfhard, and he's hilarious in this movie. But why is this character here? The movie spent the entire first hour painstakingly showing us the interactions between it and every other one of these kids. But Richie apparently even gets on the nerves of immortal demons. Wait, isn't that the homeschool kid's bike? You know, the kid we introduced 45 minutes ago and found him so interesting that he's never been brought up again. We have to help him. Damn, I know this is a small town, residential street, but there are obviously cars that come through here. And these kids are dicks to those drivers. <laughs> Henry cements his status as biggest dumbass in movie history by literally letting this rock thrown at a considerable distance hit him right in the f***ing head. Go blow your dad, you mullet-wearing asshole! While mullets definitely existed in the late 80s, the term was not coined until 1994 by the Beastie Boys in their song Mullet Head. Lethal Weapon 2 is showing at the Dairy Theater on July 4th, even though it wasn't released nationwide until July 7th of 1989. My grandfather thinks this town is cursed. He says that all the bad things that happen in this town are because of one thing, an evil thing. But he has no problem sending his grandson into this town on a regular basis to deliver meat. Why, Rich? What are you afraid of? Clowns. Then why the hasn't Pennywise the f***ing clown shown himself to Richie? This turns into a fairly scary scene, but I'm more distracted by the fact that Bill's family got three f***ing pictures of one flume ride. Clearly between this, Stanley's creepy painting, and the book Ben was looking at in the library earlier, Pennywise's real ambition is trick photography. Yeah, but it's not pitch black in here, even with the projector light off. You can clearly see the light coming through the curtains on the windows. We should be outside. If you say it's summer, one more f***ing time. Bill would be excellent at cinema sins. 
guys and you heard that? It's not even like it had to try to separate these guys. I know they're kids and all, but they've all been shown to be much smarter than they act as soon as they get into the f***ing house. Eddie's broken right arm looks miraculously unbroken right after his fall. Also, once a f***ing again, it is content to just scare the crap out of this kid, then run away instead of finishing the job. Eddie! Richie just heard Eddie yelling for them on the other side of the door, but immediately follows the demon here who sounds nothing like Eddie, mind you, into the strange room. Bill has a great sense of dramatic timing and is able to open the door precisely when Richie is being attacked. Oh, I've heard of you, Miss Marsh. After years and years of overprotective mothering that would make the mom from Pink Floyd the Wall anxious, Sonia dishes out some classic slut shaming so we can officially understand how awful of a person she is. We all know no one else is going to do anything. How the hell does Bev know this exactly? They haven't even tried to approach the police or a single adult to explain what's going on. Eddie was nearly killed! And look at this motherfucker! He's leaking hamburger help! Yeah, is anyone gonna tend to that? They called Eddie's mom about his arm, right? And the last time Ben had a knife wound, they were all super concerned. But this time, he's been slashed open by a f***ing demon, and they're cool with it. Georgie is dead. T -t Take it back. Protagonists fight amongst themselves before the climax of the movie cliche, and... Dear God, hope you got the letter and... Damn it, I'm conflicted between assigning a sin for the sad music plays before the inevitable reunion of the protagonist cliche, and celebrating the use of XTC's Dear God. Okay, one sin for the first part, and we'll call the second part a wash. Wait, so it just stopped itting for an entire month? I know Bev stabbed him in the head at the wellhouse, but he didn't seem that hurt. I mean, the f***ing thing only eats every 27 years, but it's good with taking a whole four weeks off. You know it's all bullshit, right? Your medication. They're placebos. Greta just happens to be present at the drugstore to give Eddie some bitchiness position to lead to the final act. Kill them all! Kill them all! Why would it want Henry to kill everyone? I thought it needed the children to feed on before he can hibernate. And shouldn't he be preying on Henry instead of getting Henry's murder bone growing? He's the same age as Patrick, and he ate that motherfucker. Come the hell on. Why would Pennywise wait until this fucking moment to abduct Bev? And the other times he's killed, the kids have been in the sewers, but this time he makes a house call. <laughs> Did Pennywise seriously need to use the front door? It was fucking padlocked. Richie! It got Beverly. Okay, I know that it would totally be a general way a group of kids would initially describe a demon, but couldn't they evolve into something more descriptive, like the killer clown or mangina dentata? Naming it it confuses everyone more than the knights who until recently said neat. I understand Eddie doesn't want to keep the bullshit pills around, but that is a perfectly good fanny pack he just threw away that could actually come in handy for carrying supplies on this mission. So Pennywise chose to keep Beverly alive just because? He knows the Losers Club is coming to try and rescue her regardless, so why is she still breathing? And yeah, yeah, there's some comment later on about Beverly not being scared, so that's why he couldn't kill her, but f*** that. Even if that wasn't a bullshit throwaway excuse, they've talked about how f***ing scared they are this entire movie. This is hilarious and creepy and all that, but why does Pennywise need to put on this clown and pony show for Beth? He knows he can do his glowy mouth trick to swallow her soul or whatever, so this silly dance is purely for the audience, which makes no sense. Why? <laughs> Jeez, there's always a secondary human villain in a Stephen King story, isn't there? This character might as well be named Ace Walter Big Jim Lloyd Mother Carmody. Beverly? Say you. The f*** just happened? If it has the ability to separate Stan from the group, why can't he do it to all of them? Just so we can get another unnecessary appearance from the picture lady? Damn it, this movie's great, but also it's at least 15 minutes longer than it needs to be. <laughs> Is the changing of the it appearance from the painted lady to the clown really that more terrifying? This seems like a massive waste of it powers. <laughs> Bill knows this is not Georgie, and grabs the gun to kill him. But he just had that speech about how they need to stick together. He couldn't say one thing to the group before he ran the f*** off. How, how is she in the air? Considering everything that's happened up to this point, Beverly floating in the air should be something that feels pretty f***ing ordinary to these kids. Beverly, why isn't she waking up? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <gasps> this works. You said I can have my boat back, Billy. Even though it is solely dependent on fear for food, he goes for the heartstrings in Bill's case for some reason. Was she fast? I couldn't keep up with it. She, Georgie. You call boats she. Actually, in this case, you call boats her, Mr. Grammar Nazi. Of course, this final confrontation between children and an immortal hell spawn's gonna come down to good old-fashioned punching and kicking. The kids are floating down. Does this mean Ben and his magical lips are about to get a workout? So were none of them charged with any crimes related to the murder of Henry Bowers? I know the town's used to kids going missing and all, but they would have found his car outside the house that had all the missing kids in it, right? Bye. Jesus, I know this is an emotional farewell, but the end of this movie makes The Return of the King look like a one-act play. Hey, sewer rat may taste like pumpkin pie, but I'd never know because I wouldn't eat the filthy mother. Ever since CinemaSins began, the most requested thing has been TV Sins, and now it's a reality. <gasps> Click the link in the description below to check it out. And now, the audio outtakes. See you later. Bye. See ya. Bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
How's it hanging? I'm David Pumpkins. <laughs> I'm not afraid of you. You will be. You will be. Well, if you're crazy, then we're all crazy. We all go a little mad sometimes. I have the high ground. I've seen the Exorcist about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. Son, you got a panty on your head.